This week, we got a surprise for you guys. Friday, we will be dropping part two of our Atlanta live podcast with Jay Morrison and Kiana Watson. That will be out Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, guys, welcome back to yeah. EYL, State of the Union <laughs> episode. Like that. Yeah, we had to spice it up a little bit. Once again, if you're a loyal listener to Earn Your Leisure, you know how we started the show. It was just me and Troy, no guests. Yeah. And, um, you know, people always asked for that. And we, we did another episode, which is us uh, yeah, the essence. Two, two months ago. Yeah. I got a good reaction. So this is something that we're gonna try to do uh, at least once a month moving yeah, forward. There's a lot going on and like people wanna know our opinion. They want us to break down these things. So Yeah. It's, so it's a couple of different models that we have like for the shows. Like some some shows is we bring guests on and they break down their industry like a how to. Yep. Like uh, the mobile homes or vending machine, like yeah, a how-to. I, I just want to say vending machine. Then you, crazy. then you got um, stories, the entertainment ones, like uh, Nick Storm, Kenny Burns, where they like tell their their journeys in business. Yeah. And then you have some some shows, um, but just us, where we're like commentators. It's yeah. like it's like commentators of what's going on, trending topics, business case studies, things of that nature. And we, um, you know, we give our take on it. And we kind of just break it down yeah. in layman terms for everybody to understand. That that seems to be like the formula for us in the beginning, right? It was like yo, get these things, uh, these ideas um, from what's happening in the world, and break it down to our audience, man. So we're gonna do that for y'all today. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So before we start. Philadelphia. Philly, Philly. We got about 10 days left. It's crazy. I ain't going to sit here. <laughs> the line we got um, the live podcast. We got Wallow267, Big Business, Nehemiah Davis, and just added, just added special alert. Yeah. Yes, yes. The, the legend. legend himself, John Henry. John Henry, venture capitalist, all star, um, media guru, yeah. um, everything. If you yeah. checked out John Henry's episode, you know, like, this this dude is really just a, special, a, a man. genius. He's special, man. 27 years old. Yeah, he special hit me dude. up. He hit me up. Like, yo, I heard y'all coming to Philly. And, you know, he, he does a lot of work in Pennsylvania. Yeah, he's got some real estate stuff going so on. So he's like, yo, I would love to be a part. And I'm like, let's do it. So <laughs> John Henry will be in the building. And then the live podcast is also catered. Yeah, open, open bar. bar. And it's a private networking event too. So that's dope too, because it's like that networking is just powerful. Like look how many people that's on the podcast. Yeah. And then Wall Street Trap is gonna be there, MG the Mortgage Guy, a bunch of Andy from Y2K man. Credit Solutions, Sabim and Business, all of us, it's, yeah. it's gonna be crazy. You know, when you was doing the, the, the uh, live with Nehemiah Davis, he was like, yo, people are talking about the cost. And he was like, yo, what is it gonna cost you if you're not in that room? Yeah. Think about that. Like, when he said that, I was like, yo, damn, that's powerful. Nah, so like, it's gonna be a whole vibe. Network is and, gonna and be And then crazy. the next day, um, the 15th of March, we have the workshop with Atia Blair and Aisha Sheldon. Everybody's been asking for Aisha Sheldon yeah. for a long time. They're gonna talk about real too. estate. Alice Good Energy is gonna talk about trucking industry. And um, Kashif Edwards, ending with Sheen King, is going to be talking about vending machines and everything you need to know about Everybody, that. Everybody's been calling about that episode. Yeah, no, Everybody. that episode is on fire. <laughs> yeah. So. so yeah, man, uh, all of the information is on our website, eylexperience.com, right. eylexperience.com. Um, go check it out. And um, yeah, man, we, we love to see everybody turn out. So Philadelphia, man, we can't wait to see. The whole team going to be there too, y'all. For sure. So we're going to jump right into it. Um, the first topic that we're going to talk about is the coronavirus a serious one man yeah yeah first and foremost uh rest in peace to anybody i think it was 64 people so far that have passed away from yeah. the coronavirus mm -hmm. and um, anyone that's been affected get well soon yeah because we're gonna talk about the business side but even obviously bigger than business is health health yeah and you want to you know we can't take that light like it's a serious virus yeah i think people get confused with that they're like i think people just unaware of what it is right so it's like they just hear it on the news and then it's completely oblivious to how it works and, and what it does to the body. So hopefully we can shed some light on that. Yeah, for sure. So yes, the coronavirus started in Asia and China, I believe. Yeah. Um, Wuhan, Wuhan, China. Yeah, a few months back and it's just it spread uh, yeah. all over the world. Now, uh, 64 cases in America, uh, last time I checked. 85,000 cases across the world, yeah. worldwide. So they, they're saying that it's a global crisis right now. So the, we have epidemics and pandemics, right? Epidemic meaning that it is something that is taking over a localized area, right? And then it may spread to a few communities. And then we turn this to a pandemic. It's like worldwide where it goes from one continent to the next. So they're saying not yet, according to the CDC, not a pandemic, but a global crisis. Yeah, it's, it's serious. And I was just traveling. Um, Few different countries and I went to Toronto 
at Connecting Fight in Toronto. And it now was you like, got the mask on. Serious. Yeah, they got to check <laughs> yeah. to see like what countries you've been to and have you been to Asia. And it's a serious situation. So yeah. it's it's affecting the world's economy. Yeah. Because as we said on the podcast before, the world is flat now. So what happens on the other side of the globe affects the whole globe. Yeah. So it happened in China. And obviously, China is the world's second biggest economy. Um, so, I mean, huge supplier. <laughs> yeah, huge supplier to the whole world. Yeah. A lot of different things. So... It's, it's taking a hit. It's taking a hit. Um, some major corporations, uh, Nike, $17 billion has been shaved off of their valuation mm-hmm. in the last week. Yeah. $200 billion from um, all of the big tech companies. Yeah, like, Apple, Apple, Apple had a huge loss. Yeah, um, yeah. They, they have a, a city in China. Uh, I want to pronounce it right. Zheng, Zheng Zhou, uh, China. It's actually known as the, the iPhone capital of the world. Like half of the iPhones in the world come from there. They actually had to shut down their factory. 350,000 employees. Yeah. That's, that's like more than a city. Nah, it's serious. And it's like um, a lot of manufacturing goods come out of China. So yeah. even like on a, on a local level, uh, like I know people that's personally affected by it. Like, uh, small business owners that's getting merchandise from China. They yeah, can't, we had that conversation overnight. Yeah, they yep. can't get it. I just spoke to Alex Good Energy. Shout out to Alex, and he was telling me how the trucking industry is affected by it right now. Yep. A lot of um, goods that are being trucked that come in from China haven't come in or can't come in right now. So right. the trucking is a little slow right now. So it's it's affecting everybody. It's yeah. serious. I mean, China's economy in, in itself, right? We just finished having a trade war with them, and right after the trade war, now we have the coronavirus, and it's like, yo, know, they're taking a huge hit. Huge in manufacturing and even in, in the prescription drug that would like that was something I had to find out myself. Like a lot of the ingredients that go into our prescription drugs come from China. So like there's gonna there's shortages on that, man. So it's like a global effect and things that we had no idea, like this is how important this is. Yeah. So we'll start off with the stock market. So this is something that is is a really big thing because stocks um, are down 12% one week, yeah. which is the largest pullback in the stock market for one week since 2008, yep. since the um, financial crisis. Um, that 12% pullback wiped away all of the gains for 2020. <laughs> mm-hmm. So there's no gains that have been made as far as the stock market is concerned for the 2020 based off of just one week. Um, they had the sharpest drop in the day since 2008, once mm-hmm. again. Um, so it's, it's 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 really serious. So a lot of people's panicking right now. Like, what should we do? Yeah, it's like you know, it's crazy. I seen I seen the comments like, yo, what should we do? What should we do? It's like, yo, listen, man. And, and when when we see red, we don't panic. Yeah, we so don't panic. I think I think it's important to understand that before we even talk about like the effect on the stock market, you have to understand how the stock market works. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think people fully understand how the stock market works. So just general economy, period. Like, so. There's what's called bulls and bear markets, right? The bull market is when the stock market is going up. Yep. Bear market is when the stock market is going down. The reason why it's called a bull because they have horns and they throw their their prey in the air yeah. when they're like wrestling with them. And they're aggressive, yeah. in a sense. Well, not even that, but they 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 throw it up. Like if you try to wrestle a bull, like they'll toss you up. Mm-hmm. Whereas a bear wrestles you down. So that's why the bull goes up and the bear goes down. A little tidbit for anybody that was interested. So the average bull market is seven years, mm-hmm. right? The average bear market is 14 months. So we've been in a bull market since the end of 2008. So we're in, a, we're in almost a 12 year bull market. Yeah. So I say that to say, if you study history, we can, we can never predict the future, but the best way to kind of predict what will happen is to look, look what already happened. Yeah, happened look at the past, past man. Right? We're already years <laughs> past what Overdue. should have been a bear market, exactly. right? So I mean, it's common sense that a bear market is gonna come eventually. Yeah. Um, pretty soon, probably, yeah. right? I mean, it's just like saying, okay, if you live somewhere like in Florida, Miami, they have hurricanes, right? If you haven't had a hurricane in 15 years, you're probably due for a hurricane. One's coming. It's, it's overdue. Yeah, I mean, it's like the law of nurture, right? What goes up eventually must come down. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then there's market corrections, mm-hmm. right? So, a market correction is a pullback in the market, usually about 10%. So, this is what would be a market correction, yeah. right? So what happens is that market corrections happen. Like we had a market correction in 2018, right. but we haven't had a recession. Recession, people throw that term around a lot as well. Yeah, recession, how they define recessions is two consecutive quarters of negative GP, yeah. GDP growth. So like people who don't know, understand that quarters, obviously there's been four in a year, first, second, third, fourth. Right, so that's like six months. 
six months of negative um will result in a recession mm -hmm. right so all right how does this all play out for the stock market right right now the stock market is going down the stock market is not going to go to zero never like, it's not going to happen never right? never never so it's like if in my opinion like you it's hard to time the market there's people saying like okay this is a good time to get in because the market is down mm -hmm. well you have to be careful with that because it's still only down 10 percent. it could go lower like we saw in 2007 when the stock market was down 40 percent, 45 percent. right so just because it's down 10 percent, now you buy the dip now what if it dips again we've learned our lesson in that yeah exactly <laughs> you gotta learn from crypto <laughs> also people saying that you should um sell and make a profit right right so now that you have to be careful with as well because it's like all right at what point do you do you decide that it's a good point to sell because if you if you bought a stock at a hundred dollars right mm -hmm. and it's now 200 and it pulled and it pulled back from 300 then you might say okay i double my money i can sell mm -hmm. that might not be a bad idea but if you bought a stock at a hundred dollars and it's now fifty dollars Right now, you lost fifty percent of your money, so that's probably not a good time to buy. You never yeah. want to sell yeah. when the stock market is down because you only lose money in the stock market when you realize it, when you actually take the money. Until that, it's just a loss on paper. Yeah. So I mean, it's important to to understand that um, because a lot of times people look at the the economy, they look at the stocks, and they're like, "All right, I'm gonna jump in now," or like, "I'm not investing in anything because everything must be down." That's not necessarily true as well. Right? We got there are stocks that are gaining in this economy even with the coronavirus. Yeah, we're going to talk about that as yeah. well. But so once again, it's important to understand history and how history plays a part, right? So if you look at like past viruses, this, is, this, this isn't the first virus. No. They, they said, and this is a good study too, I think it was in, in a business society. There was like, it seems like every election year over the past like 20 years, there's always a virus, right? So in 2004, there was the SARS. You remember that? The, mm -hmm. the, like the acute uh, respiratory syndrome. And then after that, we had swine flu. And then we after that we had the Ebola virus. Then after that we had Ebola virus again. And Chola, Chola virus. Yeah. That was in Haiti. That affected. Right, 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 right. Uh, so like right now, obviously we have an election year, and now we have the coronavirus. So it's like we've seen these things before. Yeah. So, but, but, but even e digging down even deeper than that. So once again, if you study history, you can kind of predict what's going to happen in the future, right? So it, there's a um, six month pattern with with viruses. I don't know why six months, but that's the pattern. Mm -hmm. In 2010, in 2010, the Chola virus uh, affected, I think, the Caribbean. I'm pretty sure. Like I said, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, it was in Haiti. Mm -hmm. So the stock market was down two percent based off of that outbreak. Six months later, it was up thirteen percent. Um, 2016, the Zika virus uh, hit and the stock market was down 6%. Mm -hmm. And then six months later, it uh, broke even. And then the Ebola virus. The Ebola virus was down 7%. Right. And then six months later, it was pretty much even. So six months is like the window for these viruses. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they're saying. Six right. months is the window if you look at the past. So if you follow that in six months' time, we should, yeah. we should recover from this, yeah, right? So we're in about two months in right now. Yeah, so I say that to say, at some point, there will be a recovery. Yeah. When, I mean, it's kind of, we just, you have to use educated guesses, right? Right. But the thing that, like, I see people on Instagram, like, well, this virus is different. This is a, yeah. no, it's really not. Yeah, it, it's very similar to the SARS virus, where it's a respiratory virus, where if you cough or sneeze and the rest your cells get in the air and it goes to somebody, you, it's like having a fever. I love We've history. Seen this like, history used to be my favorite subject in school because, like I said, that's the best way to kind of know what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. Even going back to the plague. Like that killed millions, millions of people, millions, 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 and ruined the world economy. It's it's still bounced back. Like viruses, plagues, diseases, th it's been going back since the beginning of time. Right, and it's affected economies since the beginning of time as well. But for some reason, people have short term memories, and they always think like what's happening now is the worst thing ever. Sure. We live in that that that's the environment we live in, right? Everything is immediate. Like what's happening now, that's all we can see. Or and also we have we have a situation where we feel like. Everything that's happening to us is more important. Mm. So it's like, all right, this is happening now. It's affecting me right now. So this is different. Right. No, it's really not different. It's just the other things might not have affected you because mm -hmm. you might have been too young or you might not have been aware. But people, for some reason, they're like, well, this is different. 
Like, no, it's like a hurricane hitting. Like, yeah. hurricanes have hit for thousands of years. It's just like, if it affects your home, now it feels different. <laughs> that was now the worst one ever. Like, well, this is the worst. Yeah. You know, we got to pull all my money out. So, and we, have, I mean, we have more tools to see it now, right? Like, there's no escaping it, right? Like, I know some people watch the news. A lot of people watch social media. We can see this. It's on. It's it's on our feeds. It's in our timelines. We've seen it. Not in the set. Not oversaturated, but it's over publicized. And it's like we can't escape it. So it feels like this is the worst thing that has ever happened to this world. Yeah. And so it's like okay. So it's like what do you do, right? So there's different there's different types of investments that people have. Absolutely. So if, like we'll go by like different ones. Retirement accounts. That's a big one, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about that before. Like, like a lot of people, most people, have the majority of their money saved in investments is in retirement accounts, like a 401k, or IRA. So that's going to be affected by the stock market. The stock market is down, right? Yeah. But it's important to understand retirement account is for your retirement. It's long term. So if you're not planning on retiring anytime soon, <laughs> just wait it out. Yeah, right? you're, not, like you you're, take, not, you're not holding on to that, like watching yeah, that you, every day. You take your money out, you start panicking, and now you, you lost money at that point in time. Not yeah. only do you have to pay taxes, and you, you lost money, and it's a whole thing. So retirement accounts, it probably would make sense just to kind of wait it out. Probably. I mean, if it's your for your retirement, most people should be waiting it out. Unless you plan on retiring like within the next two, next three, two, years. three yes. years, then you say, okay, I might need to be a little bit more conservative because I can't afford to take a loss. Right. But it's like just wait it out, like just relax. Like <laughs> now, short term investments are a little different. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, if you just if you each individual situation is different, and that's why I hate people that give like blanket statement, blanket advice, like sell all stocks or. This is a good time to buy. Get out now. Buy now. Like yeah. you can't say that. You can't say that. You gotta look at individual situation. Like I said, if you have a short term portfolio and you made money, this might be a good time to take some profit, sell, and wait it out. If you haven't made money, me personally, I'm never gonna sell if I don't if I don't make money. It's like for what? I already lost. I'm not trying to double my losses <laughs> by actually selling. I want to just wait it out until it gets breaks back in. But those again. are valuable lessons, right? Like the average investor, especially like in the beginning, and I, I can speak for myself. It was like. The first time in 2007, like I had just found out like what stocks are, and I was studying it. And when when it, the market crashed, that's the first thing I did. I wasn't educated, right? So like the educated investor, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna know to do that, right? But for the average person who's just getting in, that's why it's, this is important. Like having this topic and, and bringing light to this is like, yo, we made the mistakes. Don't make those mistakes. Like hold it that, right? So hopefully you don't have to go through that. Yeah, and it's important too because it's like now you have to realize that. Emotions are, are the, like the biggest thing when it comes to the stock market. So no matter how much education that a person gets, they still make decisions based off of emotions mm -hmm. nine times out of 10. So there's a reason why, like in the stocks you always hear, buy low, sell high. But there's a reason why most people buy high and sell low. Because what happens is that, this is a perfect example of this. What happens is that when the stock market is up, whether it's Bitcoin, any type of investment, real estate, whenever it's up, and people feel like it's called FOMO, fear of missing out, right? Mm -hmm. When they feel like they, they're missing out on it and they, they have to get it, that's when they want to jump in, yeah. right? And then what happens is like now, when it's starting to crash, and then they, they panic and they think it's going to go down to zero and they're going to lose every single dollar, and then they sell. Yeah. And then it comes back. <laughs> like, so no, I, like, I, you know, that you, you're literally are telling my story. It's crazy. It was like that is the exact emotion. It I don't was, understand why people just yeah. can't learn from history. Like yeah. that's why I said like the history is the best teacher. It's not the first time this has happened. It's not the first time the market corrected. It's not the first virus. It's not the first anything. But every time it happens, people make the same mistakes that people in the past made. You, you know what I think one of the main things was? It was like not having a lot of capital. So like I didn't have a lot of capital, so with the the little that I invested, it was like, damn, am I willing to lose it all? So at that time, it was like, nah, I wasn't willing to lose it all. I'm not thinking long term. I'm thinking like, yo, I just put this money in. It's losing money. Let me take whatever I can get out, not knowing. You know what I mean? So you just told my whole story, man. Yeah, pretty much. But you said, but like you said earlier, there, there are some stocks plays that we're not giving any stock advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once again, nobody knows what's gonna happen. But there's some stocks that people are speculating yeah. might be able to benefit from this situation. Yeah, so like as, as conditions worsen, right, if they will, like you said, if we're only two months into this this virus, right, then conditions are probably going to get worse and as it spreads throughout the world. And, and people are saying, like the CDC is saying, like, yo, America, you should be ready. Prepare now because it could get here, right? There's, I think, 12, six, 12 confirmed cases. I think 64 people got tested. So you think about that, right, and it was a great article. It was like, if people are staying home from work, well, what type of stock would you look at to ha 
to alleviate that, right? So when you look at a stock like Zoom or a company like Zoom who does telecommunications through the home system, now people actually don't have to leave their home. They're safe there. They can communicate. More people are going to start doing that. That work from home thing is going to become huge in these next couple of months. So that's like something that to look into. It's like, all right, well, we can invest in that because we know if this worsens, that's going to help that uh, that stock particularly. Biotech stocks also. Biotech stocks are down, but um, speculation biotech stocks might increase. Mm -hmm. um, Moderna, I, I believe that's I'm saying the companies correctly. Um, M O D E R N A uh, is a company that is. A leading towards a vaccine Ooh. for um, the virus. The cure is always the best part. So their stock was actually up last week, and then it kind of came down a little bit. But yeah, if you if you do your research on them, they're actually yeah they're they're leading towards. I think they might even have a vaccine already, but they're like very soon they're putting out a vaccine for it. Yeah. So yeah, we had a conversation the other night with with, um, with MG, and he was just like, "Yo, this helps my industry." You know what I mean? Bigger than, outside of stocks, we're just like, yo, mortgage rates are going to go down, right? Because people are not buying homes at the same rate. They're feeling like they're going to hold on to their money. So, obviously, the reaction is mortgage rates. So mortgage rates goes down. So, that's another industry where it's like, all right, well, somebody's going to benefit from this outbreak. Yeah, you can also make money short in stocks as well, mm -hmm. um, which is highly risky. So, we're not <laughs> telling anybody to do that. But, but, but. If you educate yourself and you understand how to short stocks, I mean, it's common sense to say, okay, what stocks probably would be, be down, right, in this situation? So, consumer spending stocks are down. Obviously. Yeah. I mean, all stocks are down, yeah. but that's going to be something that's going to be happening. Yeah, we talked about it. You mentioned Nike. We mentioned Apple. Yeah, yeah. it's Apple. Um, travel. Absolutely. Travel, yeah. airlines. Yeah. And they're changing their projections, too, because it's like, yo, we projected to do this for 2020. They're looking at their first quarter like... Yeah, we're not gonna make it. Yeah, you know I mean? so everybody has to adjust their figures for the year based on the first two months of the year. Yep, airlines, um, hotels, hospitality. Yeah, the entertainment industry. I know they were shooting um, Mission Impossible in Italy. They were like, "Yo, we got the virus got there," so they're like, "Yo, we gotta shut down production." Like, people don't like you're not thinking of that, right? Like, China specifically, right? The number two entertainment capital of the world, really. And when it comes to movies and movie going. They've lost huge, nobody's going outside. They can't make money off the movies anymore, right? They actually were, this year was gonna be the first year they were projected to pass the United States as far as gross income from the entertainment industry. There's no way they're gonna make it now. They just lost two months of the year, you know what I'm saying? So like, when you think about the world as being flat and think about how it, one thing can affect the entire world, these are the instances we're talking about. Yeah, and some industries that might potentially, once again, it's all about educated guests, right? Yeah. That could potentially benefit once again, kind of common sense, biotech. Biotech, what it stands for is biology technology. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, medical fields probably that, will benefit. Yeah, right? that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, this is, you're going to have to go to the doctor, you're going to have to get prescription medication exactly. and virus, all of that stuff. So they'll probably see a spike, in, especially, like I said, who comes out with the actual cure for this thing. Right. Because it's going to come out eventually. They have to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just like I said, but understand when you're shorting a stock, we, we talked about that. We're going to have an episode on shorting stocks too, but it's not for somebody that's not experienced. Strictly for live, man. But, but, <laughs> but that's important to understand. I wanted to, I wanted to prove that point too, is that even when it's, the stock market is crashing, you could potentially still make money yeah. in, a, in a down market. Right. You can make money in up market, make money in down market. Somebody's always going to make money. Somebody's going to make money for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think it's just important for people to understand that. I, I would recommend just keeping composure, right? Yeah. Understand that, yeah, right now it's, it's not looking too good. Yeah. And we don't know how it's going to shake out. And I think the, the broader range of just the economy in general, this could be a tipping point for the next recession or it could not be. But at some point, we know we're going to have a recession. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah, the, the, the key thing about having knowing that a recession is coming is that let's prepare for it. Right, like let's let's get all our eggs in a barrel. And it's like, yo, listen, we're waiting for it. Right, like I had a conversation with a few people, colleagues specifically. Like, yo, you think it's a good time to refinance? I'm like, well, if you think a recession's coming, right, you want to have some money just in the event that mortgage rates go down, housing market changes, you could get some property. Yeah, I would do it. Be prepared. You don't want to have the recession come and then you don't. Now your value of your home just went down. And now you can't refinance. You know what I'm saying? So just be prepared. Yeah, be prepared. Don't have fear. Um, use your brain and keep it. <laughs> Always good to do that. Keep your, keep your composure, man. Keep your composure. All right. So in the next segment, we're gonna go over our favorite company that we talk about oh, all, we all the them. time, Amazon. They are changing the game. So we're gonna go into what they got going on next. All right. So in this segment, we're gonna talk about Amazon. Like That's I said, our favorite, one of our favorite topics. Yeah, at least once a month, we gotta bring up Amazon. 
and Jeff Bezos. They're taking over. Yeah. So yeah. their latest, their latest thing that they've done is the Amazon Go store. Yeah. Um, Amazon Go Grocery. Yeah, in Seattle, yeah. Washington. So they have they have Amazon Go stores in like other places, think in the UK, stuff like that. But they're more convenient stores. Type. Mm-hmm. This is the first full fledged grocery store. Yeah, they have fresh food in there. They got everything. They got fish, uh, produce. Yep. Uh, fresh groceries, yeah. milk, vegetables. They got it all, man. You're Anything sta- that you will find in the grocery store. Yeah, it's like a, it's a regular supermarket. You got snacks, everything. So the, what makes this different from other grocery stores is that they don't have any cashiers. Yeah, zero. It's cashierless. So usually everybody has gone to a grocery store. You buy your groceries and you go and you get <laughs> Cashed out. You wait in line. Even if you don't, even if a lot of grocery stores now don't have, they, well, they have cashiers, then they have the cash. Yeah, self checkout. Yeah, yeah self checkout. But yeah. you still got to go, you scan the items, yep. and then it's like a self checkout thing. But this is different. So what happens is that you walk into the store, you have to get the Amazon Go app. Yep. And you scan the app in order to have entry to the store. Yep. Then, um, once you do that, it's all based off of artificial intelligence, yeah. scanners, um, video recorders or they have a whole technology yeah, they got like I, I i looked at the video it's like they have like a hundred different like scanners on the ceiling all right so as you walk through the store it tracks you all right so like people can literally just walk in like if i wanted to get some bread like i could literally just walk in and just put it in my bag and the scanner would detect it you yeah. know what i'm saying it's, it's different it's crazy no it's a whole vibe and yeah so like you take the bread off you put it in your bag and it's, it says okay two dollars gets added now if you change your mind you put it back on then it takes the two dollars off yeah, everything is getting scanned so yeah and then um so everything is already scanned in the app and you just put what you want in your bag and then you just leave yeah they got a sign it's because it just walk out like as yeah. you walk in the store it's like yo this is like the just walk out store so literally you bag up your stuff and you walk out and when you get outside you get your receipt yeah it's crazy and they, <laughs> so they said that this, this store i just opened in seattle is gonna be like the test run yeah for this model moving forward yeah and then, you know what was ill was like yo people were looking at that like guy yeah, what happens if i like pick up an apple or something and it was like if if i pick up an apple well they they've changed the way that they do it now they don't charge per the weight they just charge per item so every apple is 99 cent right whereas sometimes you get like a watermelon it's like yo depending on how much it weighs that's how much you pay not everything the same price and they've actually it's about a youtubers because they one guy tried to um trick the system <laughs> already yeah there's a lot of that going on like where well, he changed his jacket and he got away with some items but they they scanned him for an avocado that he left and <laughs> There's been some, there's been some, some, some chinks in the armor where like people have been able to actually, because that's the thing. It's like yeah. people, like if you rob them, right? You talk like, about just walk out, like we walking so, out. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, but but it's it's not as easy as you think. Yeah. I saw. You know what? Speaking of, that, I actually saw um, somebody had a like this glitch where they open the freezer because there's a lot of frozen goods in there. So they open the freezer, and if you open the freezer at a certain angle. The scanner can't see it, so it's like weird. Like now, they're actually gonna put the technology on the freezers, so like you, you, ha- it, everything gets scanned into your item. Yeah, I'm sure the that they'll be, they'll be, you know, um, making changes as they go along with yeah. it. But the the thing that the thing that's really interesting is that so now a lot of labor unions are complaining, yeah. and they're saying We're, they're taking all the jobs. Yeah, saying taking the jobs. So I didn't even know that there was that many cashiers yeah. in America. So there's 3.5 million, million yep. cashiers in America who average around $10 an hour mm-hmm. pay. Yep. So now it's a thing where it's like, okay, if this is the model moving forward for grocery stores, that's 3 million people who are at risk of losing their job. Right? Yeah. So like, I mean, that stat is, is crazy, right? But the illest part is that you know the company that hires the most people in, in the United States? Amazon. <laughs> so it's like it's, it combats itself. Like, yeah, we're automating some things, but we're also creating jobs well, at well, a different rate. I think also it's, just, it's a harsh reality that we live in, but um, people have to be able to adapt to what's going on right yep. now, right? And it's like I remember like in New York, if you're from New York, you know that there's no tolls. It's tollless, <laughs> right? Exactly. Um, but those were jobs that people had where exactly. you drive and people were standing in a toll booth and they break change mm-hmm. and that was their job. They might curse you out. <laughs> that, was, that was their job, the tolls. But now it's like it's over. all of those jobs were lost because they realized it's a lot more efficient for, for cameras to take pictures mm-hmm. and easy pass and stuff like that, that there's no need to A, it, it, it actually slows up traffic, right? Yep. And then B, you spend in a lot of money where you put a camera in place, you don't have to pay the camera, it's already done. Yeah. 
So these is these are this is just more proof to me as far as the 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 wave of what now you call the future right now mm-hmm. that technology you're either on the right side of it or the wrong side of it. Yeah, and it's, it's double edged sword because if you think about it, right? Amazon, what they're doing with the gro- the go grocery store is like they're creating lower prices because they're not paying employees at the same rate. Like they have workers in the store, but they don't have twenty five. Uh, cashiers. Well, now, now if I don't have 25 cashiers, I can lower the price for milk. I can lower the price for these goods, right? So now if I have to compete with a grocery store, they can't do that. Well, that's their scaling. I've been Amazon's model from day one is to have lower prices that the competition can't really be. Exactly. And more efficient way of actually doing business. So this fits right in. And they just brought Whole Foods. Yeah. So the interesting thing. And those products are in the store. <laughs> yeah. And so the interesting thing about um, Amazon is that, like, when we talk about, like, the death of retail and it is uh, brick and mortar dead. And a lot of people have contributed Amazon to, like, speeding up that process of, like, killing brick and mortar businesses because everybody's shopping online. But now this is a play to build out their, their brick and mortar business. Right. So Amazon. In my opinion, they're really trying to dominate every aspect of, of your life, right? So it's like eating food is a is an essential part yeah. of life. Eight hundred billion dollar industry. It's <laughs> something that you, you can't get away from. Yeah, everybody has to do it. So now with the Amazon, now the, the brilliant thing about Amazon is that they already have the infrastructure in place to ship mm-hmm. items. So they have these these grocery stores in place, what can also be um, holding units, storage units that they ship out groceries yeah. so now instead of actually going to the store you can order the groceries and now have it delivered to you so now they're going to get it to the point where it's like okay if you get food which everybody has to have food <laughs> you either you want the in-person experience we have in-person if right. not we already have it set up it's not actually even costing them more money yeah. because they already have these grocery i'm just saying hypothetically speaking let's say this really expands and they have these grocery stores all over america and all these major markets now it's going to be easy to do same day shipping of groceries yeah. because the warehouses are they're already there in yeah. grocery stores and we spoke about that too when we were talking about brick and mortar it was like look there's a reason why Amazon's buying up old malls, right? Those are the epicenters of cities. They have all the infrastructure there. They have plumbing already there. If nobody is going into malls and malls eventually, the stores, you know, can't pay the rents and leases, they'll eventually come in by that. And now they're at the epicenter of every city. So now you have same day shipping, right? Now I have the epicenter. That becomes a warehouse. You order Amazon, same day it gets to you, right? Like you can't get more efficient than that. No, nah, you really can't. And that's even the play. So Amazon and Walmart has been going back and forth. Yeah, they they back up yeah, competing. And Walmart is actually making an insurgence and a lot of people are saying that they're becoming a threat to Amazon. One thing that Walmart has over Amazon is that they have so many locations. Right. So now they've they've started the same day shipping and all of that. And yeah. that's what that's exactly their play is that they don't have to like Amazon is using warehouses. Mm-hmm. Where Walmart, all of this stuff is already there. They already have the infrastructure in place. Yeah. So they're saving money because they're not paying for any warehouses. Right. All of the Walmart stuff is hold, held in Walmart factories and stores and it's getting shipped out from there. So I see this as something that Amazon could potentially take from Walmart yeah, instead easy. of just keep having these Amazon shipping factories where it costs a lot of money to uphold that. Yeah. It's like, okay, now you have a grocery store at the very least the money that's coming in from the grocery store probably offset the cost of the shipping, but we all know shipping is Amazon's thing. So now you you build out that and you get the money from the grocery store, but you already have the infrastructure in place to ship it out. And they got one of the most important things down pat, the experience, right? Like if you've ever shopped at Walmart, no disrespect to anybody at Walmart, but it's like it's, you waiting in line, especially if you got kids. I mean, it, it, it's a it's an ordeal, like going through Walmart with kids, and then you got to wait in these long lines. Now it's like, yo, I can go to the store. Like, it won't be a thing for parents to say, like, oh, I'm going to the supermarket, because we don't have to wait in line. Like, I'm getting this, I'm getting this, and we're out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like that experience just changed everything for everybody. It's a game changer. And then also, also, what's even more interesting to me at least is like people. You always got to look deeper than what's on the surface. Like this, we're talking about groceries, but I mean. Who's to say this isn't a scalable model for every form of retail? Like, right. You can just potentially walk into a sneaker store at some point and just take sneakers off the rack and leave. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why it can't be. I mean, obviously, those companies have to invest the type of technology and have the type of capital to do it, right? Because it takes a lot to put 
two hundred cameras in your ceiling. How much? How much does it cost to have so my, millions of employees? I'm sure they got a lot of loss too from people just stealing stuff out of the store. Well, they get they get loss from people stealing with employees there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So it's like going forward. If like I said, is this is this is this is a test run to see. But if this if this works out, which I actually think, you think it it's will. a test. I feel like they already know what they're gonna do. Yeah, I'm not saying test as far as if it's gonna work because you yeah, never yeah. you never know if it's gonna work or not. But I feel like if this works, which I think it probably will work, I don't see why other every area of retail won't move towards that. Yeah, moving forward, it's like it's a lot easier, even from the customer standpoint. Like I don't want to wait online to to ring up stuff at H and M or any store. Like <laughs> it would be much easier if I just walked into. Macy's or H&M or Foot Locker or whatever got what I wanted yeah. and walked out. Yeah, it changes it. So like now you get foot traffic going back into stores. I think it helps, right? Because now you got people actually going in where that's a problem right now. People don't go in. Everybody shops online. Where if we know it was that easy, yeah, we might think twice. Like, all right, well, I'm just going to grab that and I'm coming back home. It's easy. It might be the resurgence of brick and mortar in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, so, and then, and then, we can't forget about the Whole Foods play in this either. Whew. Whole Foods actually been struggling. Well, that's true, that's true. <laughs> so, now I, it's like, it's interesting, because Amazon buys Whole Foods, which is a grocery store, but then they start their own grocery store called Amazon Go. Yeah, because, well, I mean, well, and that that's a part, right? Because a lot of people don't, the people who don't shop at Whole Foods, the number one thing is the pricing, right? It's, it's not cheap to eat healthy. It just isn't, right? So, like, if you're shopping in there, you're going at a different price point. Whereas now, if I go to Amazon, the Amazon uh, grocery grocery store, I could have the Whole Food products at a discounted pick, uh, rate because they don't have the employees, right? If we're not paying this way, we can help customers this way. No, but, yeah, but since you still have Whole Foods, though, so what are you going to do with Whole Foods? We got to see. That'd be interesting. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I understand that that perspective but it's interesting to buy a grocery you would think they would just expand Whole Foods and just make a, a, a cash layerless Whole Foods they already had like you brought a grocery store yeah. what's the point of having a different grocery store when they you would just purchase a grocery that, store I mean when they bought it they were just following up the competition like how are we going well, to compete potentially yeah. that's a play you know that. we, we've seen them do that before plenty of times we talked about the diaper absolutely uh, play and that was like I think that was episode 4 that was early on early on early yeah, in yeah, the yeah. podcast yeah they just swallowed up the competition now it's like alright well we want to compete with Walmart, all right, we're going to take this. And now they're like, all right, well, we can make this better. But, like, yeah, you still have that asset that you bought. What do you do with it? Yeah, and if anybody's not familiar with the diaper thing, that's what uh, I'll give, like, a, a brief synopsis of it. They were in uh, this diaper company. Um, Amazon wanted to get in the diaper market. Yep. And the diaper company that was, I think it was, like, diapers.com. Di diapers di yep, diapers.com. Diapers.com. So what Amazon did was they ended up um, – lowering the price of their diapers <laughs> much lower than diapers.com to the point where they was losing money they was losing like a hundred million dollars a month yeah. i think something like that and they did that they was bleeding money just to kill uh, diapers.com <laughs> and diapers.com ended up folding so they lost a bunch of money short term just, yeah. it's just though they lost money short term to win the long term play oh they definitely won it so this might be the, the same play with Whole Foods who knows yeah. but Whole Foods is not doing well and like I said it's just interesting to me that instead of pumping more money into Whole Foods instead of rebranding Whole Foods they decided to go with Amazon Go yeah so like I said test run but I think this, this is something that's gonna stick also so stocks we talked about stocks in the last the last thing um, so it's all it's all interchangeable right so this will be interesting to see how Amazon's stock will appreciate or depreciate based off of the success yeah. of Amazon Go. Oh, we need to depreciate a little bit. I want get. We need some. Yeah, it, 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 it's <laughs> going. So. It's going to be interesting to to see how this how this goes moving forward. Because, like I said, I mean, Seattle is a is a tech city. Yeah, it's the hub. It's a tech city too, though. Yeah. Seattle's like one of those cities, like Austin, Texas, where it's you know a lot of people. I don't. You you got to see how this works in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. and down south and things like that. I, I would be interested to see. I mean, I feel like that would work great in like major metropolitan areas. Like New York City, that would be great because people are moving so fast-paced. It's like, all right, we can get it and go. Um, you know, like big cities like that, I think it would be great. I, and they'll be, I'm sure they'll be extremely strategic about where they place these stores. And there's still jobs. Yeah. Like People still work of, in of, them. Of course. You, yeah, so you can explain that, people that still work Yeah, in so them. like there's no cashiers, but there's still people that work inside the store. So like if you've ever been to a grocery store, and like I know, I go in there a lot of times, I'm lost. I have no idea what anything is. So there's people to direct you, to show you where things are at, to help you with that customer service experience. Whereas like if I go to a supermarket right now, like I'm in the aisle, and it'll be like 
10 minutes before somebody comes like, yo, you need help? Nah, it's the worst. <laughs> it's like, I usually got to go to the deli like, yo, bro, can you tell me where the orange marmalade is? Because I have no idea. You know what I'm saying? So like now they have the people in the aisles that can actually help you with that experience to get you in and out of that supermarket faster. And that's something that Apple, Apple mastered that. Because if you think about it, that's what most, com- like I, I, I hate that. Whether it's retail stores, grocery stores, when I, I can never get help. I go in this <laughs> store and there's never anybody to help me. But there's always a million cashiers. Like if you go to Home Depot, there's like 27 cashiers. You got 27 lines. And there's like two people working the floor. Yeah. But if you think about it, I'd rather have more people working the floor than the cashiers. Yeah. If you have a question, they're like, yo, go to customer service. That's uh, by aisle 30. No, nah, it takes like forever. <laughs> CVS, I got to wait 10 minutes for somebody to direct me to where I'm going. So Apple's thing is like, as soon as you walk into Apple, there's like 37 people. There's more employees than people. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and they, they greet you as soon as you walk in. Yeah. So that might be a, a play too, where it's like, okay, we'll shift it. Instead of having the money that we're going to pay the cashiers, we'll just have more people in the aisles yeah. to help, customer service type thing. And that actually is a way better customer experience for me. Yeah. I'd rather have more people in the aisles than I'm cashiers. You, I've been, lo- like no joke, 10, 15 minutes looking for something, like no clue. I mean, it, it's a terrible feeling. And, it's, and we waste time doing it. Yeah, especially if you're getting a lot of groceries too. It's like, it's a lot much easier. Cause like if you got a hundred items, you gotta wait for like 30 minutes for them to ring it up. <laughs> nah, That's the worst. Something. Like, yeah, and you get there and it's like, yo, it's like the, the 10 items or less line. It'd be like 50 people in that. I'm like, yo, come on, Because everybody's man. trying to get like 37 yeah. items and 10 items or less line. Yeah, they put their kid with one basket and you got one basket with 10. It's like, yo, stop, lady. I know y'all on the same family. Yeah, it's, stop. A whole nonsense. <laughs> it's a whole nonsense. People fight. People fight in grocery stores for over, over the lines. Cutting lines. That's a fact. Nah, it's a, a whole, fact. it's a whole vibe. So, nah, this is actually interesting. And with, as as parents too, man, like we ain't got to deal with the hassle. Like, yo, can I get that? Can I get that? Can I get that? When, you know, they put all the candy in the front. Oh and yeah. And now you are stuck and you can't move. And like, yo, you know, your kid about to start crying if they don't get this candy. Everybody look. It's like, yo, man, like we got to really put the Snickers bars right here. Like, nah, this is the wave. <laughs> I, I can see it. I can see it. This is the wave. This is this is crazy, man. You walk in the store, get what you want, and leave. That's it. That's dope. That's dope. Like that's that's that's. I think that's gonna be the future. I'm gonna be yeah. honest with you. That'd be fire. And everything, grocery stores, everything. Like, you just walk into the gas station, get the Snickers bar, and leave. Like, imagine that. Like, that's gonna be the future. Like, it's, you just get a Gatorade and leave. Yeah, that's gonna be crazy. I mean, the AI, because then you gonna have people like yo, if they're watching that, what else are they watching? Well, they already watching. You know what I'm saying? So it's I like, mean, they you know that. <laughs> so streets is watching. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bezos is watching. <laughs> That's a fact. Big brother watching. <laughs> That's a fact. So, well, we'll be tracking this. Um, see how it goes. Like I said, I think it's something that's extremely interesting. Yeah. And once again, Amazon's on the hate it or love it. <laughs> hate them or love them. You, you got to give them respect for being on the, the cutting edge of the, 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 everything. the world. Yeah, the I, world. I would say technology, but it's more than technology. It's everything, man. Yeah, the world, man. Yeah. They, they really push the envelopes. And sometimes they make mistakes, but that's what life is about. That's what business is about. It's just being trailblazers and taking risk. Yeah. So They can afford it. Yep. <laughs> they certainly can afford it. All right. Well, there goes that. We'll see what happens. All right. So in this last segment, we're going to go to Throwback. Everybody's favorite segment. If you're a loyal listener, shout out to the earners at day one. Yes, all of the day one supporters know what I'm about to refer to. If you're new to the program, then I'll I'll enlighten you. <laughs> um, so story time was a staple for Earn Your Leisure early beginnings of our podcast journey, where we um, we did like case studies and we examined examined different things of like real world. Uh, business breakdowns and stuff like that and um, we put our spin on it and we called it story time yeah so um, we're going back to that yeah it's time it's that. time again yeah let's do it sure, again for sure so let's do it to win boys and girls ladies and gentlemen without further ado story time all right so for today's story is um teachable moment yeah but, uh, it's actually it's a little it's, different for us it's pretty sad yeah most of the story times are like upbeat yeah uh, but this is a story, and it's definitely a, a, a teachable moment. Absolutely, it's a, it's a story to learn from. But it's not really the the, the, the most. Um, yeah, I think most of our stories, they, there's always like a triumph, and it's like, oh wow, I can't believe they came from those odds to do this, or they use their intelligence, uh, uh, their network to do that. And um, I don't, this one's a little different. Yeah, but it's still a story that needs to be told. Absolutely, nonetheless, we can learn from the mistakes. Yes. So, Wallace, Wally, Amos Jr. Yeah. Um, 
you know it's crazy. So most people, if you heard of the cookies, famous Amos, yeah, that's that's him. <laughs> they probably know him for that. Yeah, they probably know him for that. Yeah. But I didn't actually know. I was doing some research, so I know he did that. But I, what I didn't know was that in 1962 he became the first black talent agent with William Morris Agency. Yep. And he had Diana Ross in the Supremes, Marvin Gaye, Sam Cooke. Yeah, yeah, and he had uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, yeah, those were all big time. Yeah, that was pretty extremely big. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's, like think about like Diana Ross, Marvin Gaye, and Sam Cooke. Yeah, that's crazy. If I like, who does that? Who finds that type of talent? <laughs> yeah. So, but he's he was raised in Tallahassee, Florida. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Tallahassee, Tally Ho is what they call it. Um, that's from Florida days. Fam you. <laughs> Uh, Tallahassee Community College, uh, Florida State University. Yep. It's a, it's a college town. Shout out to Tallahassee. So he's from Tallahassee. He's born in 1936. I, I, that was like, what? He's still living. Still too. living, man. So, still living. Still going. So, Shout so, out to him. You know, come from a you no know, Southern background. And his aunt apparently made homemade cookies. Aunt Della. Yeah. Yeah. That was um, famous in the neighborhood. and. Yeah. Everybody loved it, yep. and you know, just a traditional type of just in the in the kitchen, just making cookies, making chocolate chip cookies. So man. that never really left him, even though he went to you know uh, pursue a career in you know managing artists and things of that nature, and eventually went to Hollywood. But mm -hmm. he always had his down south roots of yeah. cooking. Yeah, that actually was what he would give to some of his artists. He would present them with cookies, like so. Like some of the artists would come, and he had like a snack before there was riders, and you had to have all those things. Like he would bring the cookies to them. Yeah, and he actually went to culinary school also. Yeah, man. Before before he became a talent agent, he went to culinary school. Two's no joke. So yeah, so so like you said, um, he he used to gift his clients cookies, mm -hmm. and um, that kind of branched off to people saying like he should probably start his own. Yeah. company right? yeah and, and those, those same clients who you know his that he brought the talent from they became people that like you listen we love the, what you got we love the product we're gonna help you we're gonna become investors investors yeah, yep. yeah man that's important that's a fact because it it started because yeah when he was doing william morris he tried to branch off into his own thing with that and that didn't really work out right so the relationships that he established they said that they would bankroll him so it cost twenty five thousand dollars which was a lot of money in 1975. it's a lot of money now man yeah you know what i'm saying 1975 that's like a couple hundred thousand yeah um and that's where he he started uh his company with yeah i think marvin Gaye was the first guy to say like i'm gonna help this guy yeah, yeah. he started his company with uh what you called famous amos mm -hmm. And uh, first year in business is three hundred thousand dollars. So that's crazy. I read that. I said, "Wait, that three hundred and seventy-five? Yeah, he multi. Nah, he was he was he was good. So he hit he hit he hit it out the park right away. Yep. And by nineteen eighty-two, he um did twelve million dollars in revenue. Yeah. So after the, the first store, he started franchising. He was on Sunset Boulevard in Cali, man. Dude was doing it big, but he started franchising the stores out and generated some more income. Yeah. So he he really became a big name, a household name. He um. You know he's in the Smithsonian Institute. <laughs> yeah, he has his hat and his shirt. I saw his commercials, man. He said like he got so good at selling cookies because he used to have to pitch talent to record labels. And he had the relationships. Yeah. And it was a good product too. Famous Amos cookies was legit. They still legit. Yeah, I'm saying. I mean, they changed the recipe, yeah, but it's still legit. So, um, so in 1982, he's 12 million dollars. So, yeah. like I said, 12 million dollars in the early 80s, probably the equivalent of. 40 million now yeah. like a lot he's big time that's a lot of money right so he became a household name and um he starts to you know buy property and he's living the high life right um so in 1985 that's when things start to kind of fall apart yeah story changes so he still did pretty decent that year but they made 10 million instead of 12 million so now it's just, he's you know they, it's a loss like first year when he's starting to like go backwards he was mm -hmm. going up and then now he's starting to like go down a little bit, right? Right. So he makes some changes. He fires um, some managers um, and puts some other people in positions. So he said, admittedly, like he was never, he didn't really understand how to run business. He's a talent agent right. and he's a cook. To his own credit, admittedly. Yeah. I, I don't know how to run a business. But he didn't, he didn't have any mentorship. And even his people that he's around are artists and things of that nature. He didn't really know what was going on. So yeah. it's all good. Made 12 million. Don't, I don't know how to run a business. That's, that's astonishing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was, um, and it's it's crazy too because remember we, we interviewed Ryan Leslie yeah. and he said that um, you know scaling can be like detrimental to you, like if you're not properly prepared and you're growing too fast that can actually hurt. Mm -hmm. It's actually better to have a smaller audience or to grow at a s slower pace, yeah. but to be able to manage it because like when you can't manage your scale, 
now you're really screwed. Yeah, that's his whole blueprint too. That that's Ryan Leslie's blueprint. That with, even with the smartphone was like, yo, smaller audience, larger payout. Yeah, and that's when you said like before, like less is less is more sometimes. Yeah. So now he starts to like just fall apart. He's on vacation and he finds out that he has a house in Hawaii. Shout out to all the good people. Of he Hawaii. lives there now. Aloha, <laughs> mahalo. Does he still live there? Yeah, now? He lives there now. Yeah. Um, everybody knows I used to live in Hawaii. <laughs> Tell him again. The whole vibe out there. So he finds out that his house is actually being auctioned off. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's crazy. Surprise. That's a crazy news to just wake up to. Like, oh, by the way, um, they auctioned your house at three p.m. Like, what? <laughs> he didn't even know his house was in foreclosure. Like, you know what I'm saying? like when did this happen? This is no laughing matter. We, we nah, make it, we nah, make it light yeah, of it, but nah, it's no it's laughing just matter. Crazy. It's just crazy. So it's like, but you know, once again, that just goes to show you, like, especially like a lot of um celebrities and you know like even like the fat joe situation people know like he went to jail for tax evasion but yeah. he was telling his story it was like he had his accountant that was paying all his bills for him yeah and you know he's being a rapper and he he felt like you know he's not really paying attention yeah, to we, stuff. we saw that with jim jones like yeah but it happens, happens all the time yeah he lived uh, a house in jersey kevin never garnett lived in? bunch yeah. of them so what happens with fat joe is that the accountant apparently started like embezzling, stealing money, not paying his taxes, not paying his bills. He found out because he, he was like, he always had excellent credit. He tried to get a car and it was like, his credit was like 450. And he was like, what? And then he realized that all of his bills haven't been paid for months. Yeah. And also along with bills, they had, his, account, his accountant never paid his taxes. <laughs> he had to do like six months in federal jail. So I say, I have to say, this is something that's unfortunate. It's been going on for a long period of time where people like put, trust in other people to take care of their finances and they don't know what's going on with their own money yeah and by the time they realize it it's too late yeah we see it happen too much man yeah. way too much so so yeah so so that was just like when he realized like okay things is really starting to go down crazy yeah. so now he's um scrambling and he um brings outside investors in to um, like help out with his company <laughs> yeah. because now he's starting to lose money. To the famous Amos company. Yeah, yeah. so he took, I think, like $3 million of investors' money. Mm -hmm. But that didn't really work out. Um, but those alone, so now he has to pay that back. But then they left, and then the company's losing even more money. Yeah. So now it's, it's, it's like spiraling out of control at a very rapid pace. And what are you going to do when that happens? <laughs> yeah, so in 1988, he sells the company to $3 million. He sells it for $3 million. He sells the company in 1988 to the Shansby Group. I think I'm pronouncing that correct, for $3 million. So the crazy thing about it is that now he sells the company for $3 million. And they, they keep him on as a brand ambassador. Yeah. So he makes a deal with them, and he's not allowed to use his name anymore. Yeah, because part of the sell is the trademark. Yep. Yeah. So famous and Amos. <laughs> yeah. He can't, his, his name his is. His name he can't use. He can't use his name. Yeah. Can't use it. So, but he can, so it's crazy. So he built the company from scratch, from nothing, yeah. right? Built it to a multi-million dollar corporation, sells it for way less than what it was valued for just a few years earlier. He, he was hurting. Not only do they tell him that you can't use your name, but they keep, they give him a job yeah. to be the spokesperson. For the company. Of the name that he can't use. Yeah. So he's doing that. Um, which is, has to be extremely hard. Like, think about that. Like, think about, like, you start a company named Troy's Sneakers. Yeah. Right? You love sneakers, and you build it to a multi-million dollar company. We'll take and that. And then 10 years down the line, you got to sell it. And they're saying, you can't use Troy. You can't use sneakers anymore. But we want to pay you a salary to go around the country promoting Troy's sneakers. Yeah. I mean, he found out about it when he tried to start a new cookie company. Well, we're going to get to that. So, yeah. yeah so, so then after a while, it's like, it's not. After a year, he's like, I can't do this. Yeah. And he leaves, and he's like, he tries to start a new company, <laughs> and they sue him. They're like, no, you can't use that name. For, yeah, we trademark own it. infringement. You that was part of the sale. So then he starts the company called Uncle No Name. Yeah, Uncle No Name is going make. Yeah, which is a play on that. He has no name now. It's really unfortunate. This is really, really it's tragic. tragic. It's a tragic it's, tale. Nah, it's, it's a tragic, tragic tale. It's really a tragic situation all the way around, man. That So, yeah, so Uncle No Name, he, yeah. he starts that brand. Mm-hmm. Um, but so the crazy thing about it is that as he's doing the uncle no name, uh -oh. the, the this, company gets sold. This is the worst part again. Yeah, it's the worst part. So <laughs> this is the worst part of the story. So now, because he even said like he had 
depression for a little bit. He stopped baking at mm -hmm. all for like three years because mm -hmm. Uncle Nomain didn't work out really. Yeah, I think they started making muffins. He went away from cookies. So he stopped baking. Um, he cut his beard off. Start, his whole thing with trademark was his beard and a hat. Mm -hmm. He stopped wearing a hat, cut his beard off. He didn't even want people to recognize him in the street. Yeah, it's like I don't want people. I, I, I don't, don't want it. It's so I don't want them to see me like this. Depressing. Yeah. It's like, you know what I'm saying. So, but as all of that's going on. Shansby, the company that he sold to for three million in 1992, <laughs> they sold it. A company for, we might have heard of. <laughs> yeah, 61 million. Yeah, Kellogg to Kellogg. Yeah, big, big, big breakfast company, man. So yeah, they sell it. He sells it. They sell it for 61 million in 1992, and then it gets sold again in 1998 to Keebler. Crazy. That's what the elf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Keebler cookies, that. Right. Yeah. So then, so then they, so then in 1998, Keebler decides to bring him back as a brand ambassador. Out of <laughs> it done got flipped five times already. <laughs> yeah, it got flipped his, his five times. You know what they did? You know, and he, he said when he came back, it hurt his heart. I mean, he had to, he tried the cookies, but they changed his recipe and all that. No, they man. changed the recipe. Disrespect, like the everything. Oh man, they let so, but. But at least he was able to work a deal out where he uh, made a deal with Keebler for Uncle Wally's muffins. Yeah. Um, so they, they let him have, a I guess, like a subsidiary company within the company. Yeah, they work out that well Muffins, either. things of that nature. Yeah. And um, now he gives he gives um, speeches. He's still alive. Yeah, he's still alive. He, he's still out. out and, and I think he lives in, well, he was living in Hawaii, and now I think he's back in uh, South Carolina. Um, he's back south. Um, but he's he's ma he's still making cookies. He's still making cookies. Um, I think the original idea came from his aunt Della, um, and so that's what he's going back to. His new company is uh, Aunt Della's Cookies, so because he can't use Famous Amos. So I mean, moral of this story, um, it's so many different morals of this story. It's a lot. Lesson man. points and learning points. It's just like where do you begin? But I think the first one is <laughs> business. Everything is a business. Like a lot of times people look at it like I'm a good chef or I'm a recording artist. How many times is like that's not good enough? Yeah. You got to be able to understand that no matter what you're doing, there's a business behind it. Yeah. I mean, just think about it. If he had licensed his name and Stella selling it in that deal. He could have done that. You know what I mean? Like his fortune, his fortune would have been a lot different. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't, you're, he's done now. He can't even use his own name. It's, no, he can't. Um, and it's like mismanagement it is a lot of, and it's a lot of people say a lot of times like ignorance is bliss. It's really not. It's extremely dangerous. Yeah. Um, especially when it comes to business. And it's like we did an episode on trademarks and licensing. Yeah, and shout out to Sabine. And, and the legal side of it is extremely important as well, right? Yeah. Like the people don't understand that. Like you got to understand the legal side or have a lawyer at least to help you. And it's important to people get taken advantage of. Right, you think he would have, I mean, if he sold it for three million, right? Like, what, did he get the proper valuation? Did he even know what a valuation was at that point? Oh, he probably just needed the money I just needed some point. money, I'm gonna sell it. Like, you saw it at three million, then 10 years later, it gets sold for 61 million, and you can't even use your name. Nah, man, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like I said, man, it's a, it's a tragic, sad learning experience, but nonetheless, it's still a learning experience that yeah. I think entrepreneurs, business people, inspiring entrepreneurs, inspiring business people can learn from. You gotta learn from other people's mistakes. Yeah, I mean, and he still has his health at the end of the day. He's still alive and breathing to tell the lesson. So, I mean, at the end of the day, somebody gonna learn from his mistakes. Yeah, I mean, that's the worst thing in the world for somebody to take your name. You can't use it. Like, that's like. Yeah, I mean, like he said, it broke his heart. He, he tasted the cookies, he's like, yo, they changed the recipe, nothing's the same. But his name it lives on. Like that's those are like we talked about the vending machine episode. Like those are still in vending machines right now. Like yeah. today, somebody's eating famous famous cookies. But there's a lot of people like that where it's like the name. You think these people own it, but yeah. they really don't. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah. Virgil, Donna Karen. Yeah, he's up. Donna Karen. Yeah, perfect example. <laughs> so it's a lot of these situations where it's like your name is is attached to something that you don't even have any control over. Yeah. What was that? Four hundred million. She sold it. Now it's worth like. Three, three billion, and then they put in any type of store that they want and downplay it. kills the name because it's like now the brand name isn't strong. Yeah. Yeah. Something to think about. Yeah, man. Something to think about. So, yeah, that was story time. Uh, nostalgic episode. Uh, so, once again, 
Thank you guys for rocking with us. But before we go, once again, we got to drill down on Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, it's going to be crazy. Live podcast, networking event, workshop, two-day situation. Um, don't wait. Don't hesitate. Open bar, catered. Yes. Get your tickets. Uh, EYLExperience.com. Um, like I said, it's about 10 days out by the time this episode comes out. Yep. So we're looking forward to it. And um, yeah, you got housekeeping items? Yeah, man. Shout out to everybody on Patreon. I know people be like, yo, man, I get my shout out. Yo, shout out to James, uh, Kilo, C. Marie, uh, Tonico, uh, and Jessica. We had an amazing conversation with Jessica. Shout out to her. Hopefully, um, she'll it'll lead to some some future business endeavors that we do with her. Like people know that uh, we connected with uh, Brandon Mitchell through, through Patreon, and now he's a business partner with us. So shout out to everybody that's using brand resumes, that amazing service that they have. Um, and Tajay, man, we had a group conversation. He brought his brother in the conversation. So shout out to him uh, out in Texas, man. And everybody that's on Patreon. Um, obviously, obviously, you know that there's different tiers. And obviously, we've added, added some more things for you um, just because we think y'all need it more. Um, so shout out to everybody that's there and that's supporting through that. And everybody that's supporting our merch. We got our track suits on. Everybody was like, yo, man, we got to put the track suits on the site. So they there. Um, so make sure to, to purchase that. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody in uh, Philadelphia. Yeah, the track suits is a vibe. Shout out to Beyond Wayne. He kept asking me. Yo, they wore it. Uh, so they wore it to other vets. Yeah, I got one for him. I got one for him just off the strength. Yeah. But um, yes, uh, shout out to our Cleveland family. While well, a lot of people was asking us about the track suits. So EYL University track suits is on our site, EYL. Uh, EarnYourLeisure.com All of the information For everything that we do Is on EarnYourLeisure.com yeah. But uh, happy birthday to you as well By the time this episode comes out Yeah and Most of y'all be, know that this, this guy had a very Pisces brothers man Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. So Also uh, EYL University We something that You know we pushing We just had a, a A class Actually yesterday um, About Nika It was a it was, that was like a free class to Yeah Help people out And guide them On different ways To purchase property Without putting any down payment yeah, it's like, like, We do like the free class Like once a month It's dope man Once yeah. a month So um, we A lot got of people to, get to get engaged They get to ask questions It's yeah, dope Yeah that's like a preview Of like what to expect Yeah I'm in there oh, yeah. I'm always in there So like people like They'll see us we, we, We're in those classes too Because we're trying to learn too Yeah for sure And uh, YouTube uh, every day we, we we drop content on YouTube. That's yeah. something. So a lot of people listen to us on audio, and that's great. We appreciate that. But if you want the visual experience, or if you want like we take clips from different shows and yeah. we put it on YouTube. Yeah, shout shout out to uh, everybody that tuned into the Al Harrington clip. Yeah, I thought that was dope. The future. A lot of people didn't even know we interviewed Al. It was Harrington crazy. They're that like, clip. he needs a whole hour. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, uh, we did okay. That, we did that episode. But that's the good thing about the YouTube is like we do an episode, and you, you might be new to Earn Your Legion. It might have been done five months ago, but we can drop a clip today. And it's like, oh, okay. And then you might go back and look yeah. at the whole episode. So, yeah, YouTube is a whole visual experience, and we drop a lot of content on there. And then in Patreon, we're going to be doing some more stuff. Yeah, with Patreon, Patreon. going to have exclusive episodes. Yeah, Patreon's going to have exclusive episodes and, and um, transcript yep. situation. Transcript joins, is, is, is going to be launched, yeah. And uh, shout out to Shamita. Yeah, she she's a uh, part of the team. She's doing the transcript. So, like, a lot of people listen to us through audio while they're driving or they're at work, and they never get to write down notes. They want to, but they can't. So we're going to help y'all out. We're going to transcribe um, some of our best uh, segments so that you don't have to take notes anymore. They're going to be there for you. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for rocking with us. We appreciate you. Uh, peace. Peace. Peace.